Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Anne Louise Topp and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We did not have a prayer service as we would normally the evening before, so I share a summary of the life of Anne. Anne, age 81, passed away after a courageous eight-month battle with cancer on February 27th, 2024, at her home in Hewitt, Minnesota. Anne lived a very full life. Throughout the year, she traveled to the Philippines, Alabama, and West Germany. Being from Minnesota, she said that being in Alabama was like being in a different country. While in West Germany, before the wall came down, she also visited France, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Along this journey, Anne was an avid bowler, and she was quite good at it. She liked to hunt fish, search for mushrooms, and was, act, was an active at-home quarterback for the NFL. She loved our family pick'em competition and learned to text like a pro during the games. She loved her Vikings. Although she waitressed, worked at First National Bank, did bookkeeping at Wadena Ready Mix, then drove cement trucks, Anne's passion was twofold, the farm and her family. She did it all when it came to farming, all the field work, driving her tractors and milking the cows to provide for the four children she was raising. She managed a huge vegetable garden for canning and freezing, loved her flowers, especially the gladiolas. There were always critters around, both tame and wild. Mostly the cats stayed outside, but she made an exception now and then. She raised dogs and there were puppies, cocker spaniels, cockapoos, chihuahuas and poodles, and the occasional who's the daddy batch. She was especially fond of her farm poodle Jack and her pet pig Peg. Out her dining room window she watched her chickens, ducks, horses, rabbits, deer, and the birds coming to her feeders. She especially loved the hummingbirds and orioles. She spent the last few years watching the Eagle Cam on her computer and sharing that with her sister, Jen. Anne's love for her family came second only to her love for the Lord. Blessed be the memory of our loved one, our friend, and God's servant, Anne. We continue with our next hymn, Holy, 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 hymn number 507, Holy, Holy, Holy.
The Old Testament reading is from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the 8th chapter of Romans. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we join together in a responsive verse. We speak on the right-hand page the Lenten uh, verse for this day. If we have died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the place where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. The hymn of the day is 748. I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Family and friends, all of us who are gathered in this sanctuary of our Lord as we come to seek his peace. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text I share with you today is portions of Psalm 27. These words are, I believe, reflective of of the Lord's servant over these past, well, about a year and a half since I've known Anne and the past eight months when we had been visiting and upon her request, it was at least twice a month. Psalm 27, select verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait on the Lord words of our Lord. Today as we gather in his place of refuge, our Lord comes to meet him with the power and the comfort and the strength of his word as we are filled with sorrow or the death and passing of our loved one and our friend Anne Louise Todd. 
Yet also as we gather on this day, our hearts, as Peter would remind us, are filled with an inexpressible and a glorious joy because of the life that Anne now has and the life that each and every one of us as God's dearly loved children ever looked forward to in faith. Peter reminds us what a great treasure this is, this faith given to us in the water of our baptism, that faith that has been tried and tested throughout the course of time. Even as Peter reminds us, it's refined. And over time, it yields what it intended purpose is, to bring praise, honor, and glory to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, for all that he's done. And as Anne would simply sum it up, it's all done, well, it's one or two things. His death, his resurrection. Anne was a great uh, student of the word, if you will. Many of our conversations would end up being uh, talking about, well, some would call Bible stories, uh, what we would call historical events. Uh, always true. And I was amazed at the depth of her knowledge and her understanding, not just from the Old Testament events, but how they correlated, how they interacted with the New Testament events. And in our conversations together, we enjoyed that over time. And yet she fully understood and she knew, especially in the midst of these last several months with the health challenge and the trial that was set before her, she knew in confident faith, as the psalmist expressed, that the Lord was her light and her salvation. That even in the most difficult and the darkest of times, she knew that. And she also knew, as that verse ends, whom shall I fear? Even though at times there may have been a little bit of fear that was set, but yet what would take it away? Peace of Christ. What would it take it away? The power of God's word. And then, as the second portion of the opening verse reminds us, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, it was at the close of the summary of her life, and I think it was very fitting, and his love for her family came second only to what? Her love for her Lord. She knew that the Lord was the stronghold of her life. And in every other activity of life, as God graced her with her gifts and her talents and all the events of life she enjoyed and shared, the one thing she knew most was that underneath and through it all, the Lord was her stronghold. And that no matter what had come, and I'm sure there were many other trials along life's way that formed and fashioned the confident faith of his servant, but none more than these last few months, and to which the response of the verse reminds us, of whom shall I be afraid? And she knew and she understood that her Lord was with her. There's a wonderful verse in... Uh, Exodus 14, I believe it is 14. And uh, we talked about the battle. And uh, I talked about my mom who had gone through a similar battle. And she had that verse on a wooden placard above her couch. And so this is how Anne knew and understood the strength of the Lord. That verse simply says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. What a calm that was for her. Luther's favorite psalm reminds us, verse 10, Be still, know that I am God. And as so often as with our visits, it was also her practice, the pattern of her life, uh, to be here in the temple of the Lord when she could, receiving his gifts, hearing his word, receiving the gift at the table of our Lord, and even as I joined her in her home, that same pattern continued. Except there was one kind of a variation. 
I usually had a shortened kind of version of our service of word and sacrament together, and I started the first time, and she interrupted me. And she goes, well, you got to get the hymnal off the shelf. You see, I grew up with the old TLH hymnal, so I, I knew it, I know it well. So I pull it off, and, and we had to do the order of confession as it was. You know, I, a poor, miserable sinner, and on we would go. And in all her reverence, um, she would reflect every moment as we would go through that order. And then she would hear those words. And as a call and ordained servant, the word, I announce to you the forgiveness of all your sins. And then I, I was, I probably should have done this today. I should have altered the service because um, she'd rather have not the Apostles' Creed, but the Nicene Creed. And we would go through the Nicene Creed, and as is the custom when we have a communion service, that would be the case. And it was a kind of a treasure for me in a sense, going back to the, the old Holy Ghost and all that with the translation of the Nicene Creed, but she understood everything that that creed spoke, especially knowing that God's Son had become one of us, that God's Son entered this world to take on our flesh, to walk in a manner in which we could not, to keep the law perfectly for us, and to walk to the place where we could not go where he would be that substitute at the cross for us. But she also knew that Jesus was the divine Son of God. She knew that he had his almighty power and how we love to talk about a, a number of the Bible narratives that would talk about the, uh, not only the teaching and preaching ministry of our Lord, but the healing ministry. As we'd review a number of those biblical events and and we had kind of began our journey with Christmas. And when the fullness of time come, God sent his son, and we celebrated the birth of our Lord. And then we were on into the next events. Next thing you know, we're at the River Jordan. The baptism of our Lord and God's spirit coming down on high, anointing him and saying through the voice of the Amplified, this is my beloved son whom I love with him. I am well pleased. And we know the echo in the background. Because every time we, can, we prepare to come to the table of our Lord, we sing the words. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world. You see, all these events orchestrated by God were put in place even before the foundation of the world. And we began our Lenten journey. We got through the uh, mountaintop experience, if you will. And uh, our journey was looking forward to getting to Easter. And even though, in a sense, in our time together, we never got there, we did get there because of her confident faith of knowing what was coming. And how would she know that? Every year, same pattern. We'd go through the same event. And the Lord, you know, as he ordered all things before the foundation of the world for his Savior to come, and do what God had appointed him to do, so also in our whole life. God, even before one day came to be, fashioned everything in the manner he intended it to be for us. In Psalm 139, it's a reminder to us that God is our author of life. And in fact, in the descriptor of the psalm, it says, God knit my life together in my mother's womb. How fearfully and wonderfully I'm made. I know that full well. Wow. The power of those words. This reminds us the Lord ordered all my days even before one of them. Journey of life. Words of the middle of the psalm. One thing I ask the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, that when she would come, 
she would behold the wonderful gifts, word, reminder of who she was in her baptism, receiving at the table of our Lord, and to seek him in his temple. That was the pattern to come. And I reminded her, even though when she was not able to come, well, I just brought it right to her. And what a wonderful gift. And what a, a thing I, I, I didn't realize until I looked at uh, her life data. Born on April 14, 1942, God fashioned the life together, bringing it to be. And yet, on the same day, what did God do? Gave her new life. That as we talked about at the beginning of our service, through the power of the death and resurrection, everything Jesus did for us, he gave to us in the gift at the font. That with the water and the command of our Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God said, you're mine. He gave his Holy Spirit to us. And gave us the assurance that we will inherit what Jesus has won for us. The kingdom of heaven. And oh, by the way, I should have began and I could have just said it and we could have ended it as we just sang it and knew it. Heaven is my home. Well, I I got to start uh, preaching regularly here at Hewitt. I filled in once in a while. And I think it was either my first or second message in. So it's Sunday and now it's 930 on Thursday night. Phone rings. I don't recognize that number. Answer the phone. It's Anne. She said, Pastor, I thought I knew all the events in the Bible, but you shared one in your message uh, on Sunday. And I've looked and I've looked and I've looked and I cannot find it anywhere. And I was thinking to myself, she's just like the Berean Christian. Studied the word of God. And you know what did they do? When the preacher came along and preached, they'd go like, he's right on. And we got to talking about it, and it's one of my favorite events in the Old Testament. I said, well, you'll find it in 1 Samuel 5. And it was about when the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines. And we're talking about God being the only God, the almighty God, and and all of that. And I used that illustration. They captured the Ark. They put it in the, the temple Uh, with their God. And what happened? They came in the next morning, Dagon, the God, stone God, fell face right before the ark. They put him back up, straightened him out. Next day, they come in, Dagon, flattened face down, neck broken, arms and hands broken off, And it petrified the Philistines so much that they concocted a plan. How can we get this thing back to the Israelites? Yeah. Our one and only true God. As God said emphatically, I am the Lord your God. I will not share my name with another. And all of a sudden there was a calmness. And I said, well, you know, as soon as we hang up, you got homework. (laughs) Go Read 1 Samuel 5. You know, a student of the word. And yet in her life journey as God fashioned it, one of the events was her confirmation on June 3rd in 56. And I, I, I did some looking at, we found her confirmation verse. 1 Corinthians 6.20. And have I seen, and maybe pastor has seen too over the years, that oftentimes those verses that are long been chosen, but sometimes when life comes fully back around, it seems like that verse just wraps around the life of that person. And the beginning part before her verse, leading to the end of it, uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. And then her verse, the part I want to focus on, you were bought with a price. Honor God with your body. You were bought with a price. See, that's what Ann knew. That's what Ann loved. And, and while well, she would probably say to me, you know, Pastor, if you talk about me today, 
uh, in terms of all the things of life. You know, God blessed her in her journey to share her and all those things, gifted her in all her ways. But the one thing she would always come back to is that comment of faith. Jesus died for me. Jesus rose for me. And in the explanation, as she knew it well from confirmation, you know, we were bought with a price, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, with his innocent suffering and death. And how does that explanation? That I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, this is most certainly true. How strong and powerful those words. And so all that she was permitted by her Lord to do in farm life and in fun activity of life with family that was so important. What undergirded it all was her love for the Lord that led to her love for all things and those whom God had entrusted to her care. I know one thing for certain. I'm going to miss that time with her. And we didn't get to the resurrection. But we're going to get there in a moment. There's a beloved hymn, and it reminds me as the close of this psalm says, I'm confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. And wait she did in all confidence. Maybe you know the hymn well. Jesus lives, the victory's won. Death no longer can appall me. Jesus lives, death's reign is done. From the grave Christ will recall me. Brighter scenes will then commence. And do you remember the frame? This shall be what? My confidence. Jesus lives to him the throne. High above all things is given. I shall go where he is gone. Live and reign with him in heaven. God is faithful, doubtings hence. This shall be my confidence. Jesus lives. For me he died. Hence will I to Jesus living. Pure in heart and act abide, praise to him and glory giving. All I need, God will dispense. This shall be my confidence. Jesus lives, I know that full well. Nothing me from him shall sever, neither death nor powers of hell. Part, from, part me now from Christ forever. God will be my sure defense. This shall be my confidence. And this closing verse, I think, would have so much meaning through the struggle Anne went through. And, well, she now experiences the fullness of, of uh, heaven's glory and the resurrection to come. Jesus lives and now is death, but the gate of life immortal. This shall calm my trembling breath when I pass its gloomy portal. Faith shall cry as fails each chance. Jesus is my confidence. In many ways, um, and reminded me much of that confident faith that my grandmother had. And like Anne, she loved God's word. She loved the devotional things and prayers. Beth knows as you shared with that. And my grandma would get these things and and my mom didn't know what happened, but right when you opened up her Bible, what was the psalm? 27. Tucked right into it is a poem by an unknown author. And Anne loved a lot of little clips and, and sayings of things, but here's the poem. Weep not in tears of sorrow because I've gone away, but weep with tears of gladness for the peace I have today. That inexpressible, glorious joy Peter talks about. I know your hearts are heavy with sorrow that you bear, but God has called me home. And in our gospel reading, my place is ready there. 
My stay on earth completed. My final rest is won. I've received the richest blessing. So think about it. Of all things in life, the richest of it all, to dwell with God's own Son. And as we would close our visit with that short blessing, I have no idea where that came from, but it's one of my favorites, so I, I forego the traditional ending. It just simply says, the Lord order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. And Tom received the greatest gift, the crown of life, February 27, 2024. Please rise for a prayer. We continue on page 280 with our order of service. Just a brief note, following the service, after the recession of the family and those who would desire will go to Trinity Lutheran Cemetery. Uh, there is a luncheon that is prepared, so those who remain can go right for the luncheon. Uh, the family will go to the committal and return back and join you for the luncheon. So uh, please note that. Let us pray to the Lord our and Father the one who raised Jesus from the dead. Our response to is, Lord, in your mercy, congregation, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the family of Anne and all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the full consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. As we come to gather for fellowship, we ask that you would bless these and all thy gifts which we are about to receive from your bountiful goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Anne and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. That neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And these beloved words of Simeon's song that we closed our service time together, Anne and I, uh, we will share them together in a moment. But Jesus says to us, I am the resurrection and the life who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We join in the words uh, of Simeon's song that Ann and I shared many times together. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I invite you to turn to our closing hymn which is Beautiful Savior, hymn 537. Beautiful Savior, hymn number 537, our recessional hymn.